Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about wealth. If you want to be wealthy financially, it is not about having a lot of money. It is about how long this wealth can last you. If you have a net worth of $100,000, you spend $10,000 a month, this wealth will last you about 10 months. However, if you spend $1,000 a month, having a $100,000 net worth will last you about 100 months, which is 8 years and 4 months. If you want your wealth to last forever, it is about scaling your income and net worth as much as you can and bringing down the expenses to the minimum. If you maintain your lifestyle this way, your wealth will last you a long time without having to work a single day. And that is the difference between rich and the wealthy. Now, how wealth is distributed in our society is like a pyramid. How wealthy you are depends on where you stand in this pyramid. And that is determined by your income and net worth relative to the average person in the society based on the present moment. Now, let's say you earn about $6,000 30 years ago, when everyone on average earns about $2,000, you are considered well-to-do. However, in the present-day Singapore, the medium income of someone in my age group is about $4,000. Having a $6,000 income per month is not super impressive, it is just above average. The cost of living, the property prices will keep up with what the average person is earning. Now, the system is designed in such a way to keep people working as long as possible. This is just the nature of the game. Let's say a couple brings home $6,000 combined income and we know that Singapore's total debt servicing ratio for public housing is 30% meaning to say you can only use 30% of your income to pay for public housing Now 30% of $6,000 combined income is $1,800 per month Now if you multiply $1,800 times 12 months times 25 years it is about $540,000 Now if you factor in 2.6% interest over this 25 years loan and we work backwards from $540,000, you and your partner can afford a $400,000 property. Now, I'm no property expert, so we are not going to go into details, but $400,000 can only get you a 4-room flat that is not in the corner of Singapore. It is about 85 to 93 square meter, or about 900 to 1,000 square feet. Now, the worst of all is that the government is leasing to you at 99 years. The property is technically not yours, even after paying more than half a million dollars over 25 years. If people earn slightly higher than their peers, they will try to upgrade to a private condominium for status to distinguish themselves from their peers. But condo has a monthly maintenance fee and it is negative cash flow. The system is designed to trap you with debt after debt so that you keep working. You find a partner, you get married, you need a wedding. Now after you get married, you need a place, you need housing. You can't just move into an empty concrete place. So you have to renovate and then you need to have kids and you need to take care of the elderly. And then you also need to go on holidays. There is no way to stop working because you have all these recurring expenses. I think systems are designed to benefit majority of the people. The system hardly serves your own personal interests. And when time progresses, human greed takes over and corrupt the system. Your student loan, your renovation loan, your housing loan, your car loan, it is all business to the banks. Now in the past, having a degree is a competitive advantage because not everyone has a degree. Having a degree in the past makes you stand out. But nowadays, without a degree, Everyone feels fuck. Even if they don't qualify for local university, people pay their way to a private degree. And what is worse is that not every family can afford taking on such debt. Now the problem with university is that you pay thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and everybody is learning the same set of skills. And what differentiates you from the other person is only the grade. And of course there are exceptions. People who have done super well, who have first tier scholarship, and that entitles them to elite education overseas and groomed to be leaders. These people will come back and hold multiple high positions at board of directors and have access and network with the elites. But what about our typical average Joe, which is like 85% of us? People who don't have the financial power or the right environment to compete on this kind of education background. I really suggest thinking out of the box and use first principle thinking to see the real world around you. Money or paper currency is something that a group of entities, which are made out of people just like you and me. They control the printing and the issuance of the currency and we work for them, and this is just the system. Now, I believe that building wealth is a knowledge gap. You have to close up this knowledge gap. It can be learned. There are multiple high income skills out there. You should pick one based on what you are really interested in and what you are naturally good at. Now, to accelerate your journey of building wealth, you have to build systems to grow or to automate, and that is by taking on smart calculated risks. When you have a business, you can have operating leverage. You can leverage on employees' time, the bank's money, and shareholders' equity. When you work for someone else, there's a ceiling, which is your time. You don't want to have all the money in the world, but you have no time to spend. Hence, you have to value time as your ultimate currency. Now, let me give you an example of how to build around your high income scale. Now, let's say for me, my core skills that I'm really passionate and good in is investing, options, and trading. 
Now options and investing is my core skills. Now options is really bringing me good enough active income. But how do I scale this whole options thing? I first share my knowledge by making videos on YouTube. Now this will help build a personal brand which itself has value. The videos I made will generate ad revenue. It will generate 24-7 even when I'm sleeping. Every new video I make will reach out to new viewers who will check out my old videos as well. So YouTube has a sort of compounding effect. Now when this channel merges with enough subscribers, I can monetize further by Patreon, having a self pro merchandise, online and offline courses, which I will charge fees and the profits will be donated to people in need and make videos based on it to rally more people to join this mission. The positive cash flow can be reinvested into offices, hiring people to make more financial related content. In this way, we can generate more affiliate marketing revenue and sponsorships. Now the skills can also be used to run a family office, be an angel investor or venture capitalist. The possibility is limitless. It is about grinding and grinding until you shape reality into your own worldview. So this is an example of building and scaling around your high income skill set. Traditional brick and mortar businesses is disrupted by e-commerce like Amazon, Alibaba and Shopify. Airbnb is a more lean business model as compared to hotels, where individuals can actually do the business. The world is getting more and more chaotic, with each platform sprouting new opportunities. For example, internet gave birth to Google. When Apple created iPhone, iPhone have app stores and it created many apps and that accelerated Facebook's growth. AI, blockchain, DNA sequencing, energy storage and fintech, they will create new reality. So it is good to learn, be ready for the new platforms and build upon it. In conclusion, if you have the ambition to be at the top of the wealth pyramid, there are always new opportunities out there that does not require a degree, but it requires a relentless work ethic, a never say die attitude and the ability to attract talents. I'm building up my own stuff and I feel obliged to share. I don't really care about what others think. However, if you like this sharing, do give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'm still working on 1.5k subs. Thank you and I'll see you next week.